Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. Welcome back to the Greater Resistance Podcast, episode 12. I'm Brian Hippolyte, the Manifest Mentor, of course. And I'm here with the ever so lovely Whitney Gilbert. Now, if you know, you should already know, I write books. My first book back here, Manifesting You, is in 150 different countries, changing lives, 111 keys to unlocking your divinity. That's my first one. And this one right here is my fifth one. All right? The Greater Existence, 111 Keys to Walking in Your Infinity. I've been writing books, been getting to it, been uh, turning my thoughts into things and profiting off of intellectual property and teaching from the things that I've created. So it brings me so much joy to uh, enter another divine energy into the space as, um, as an author. And I've had the pleasure of doing it with a few other people have already created a few best-selling authors. Uh, but truly, none of them have been more, uh, bring me more joy than your first book oh, yeah? coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm excited about it. That's why I'll be on you about it because I can't wait to see it take place. So tell us about your book and tell us when it's going to be. Let's, let's just start with it. What is it called? <laughs> what is it called? It is called Overcoming Superhero Syndrome. Overcoming Superhero Syndrome. Mm -hmm. What is Superhero Syndrome? Superhero Syndrome, it sounds just like what it, it, the, the title says. A superhero is anyone who would allow themselves to stop whatever they're doing when, if you think about Batman, they have that, the bat, you know, sign or whatever in the sky. Whatever's happening, he drops what he's doing and he goes to take full responsibility and save the rest of the world. Mm. And many times that doesn't align with what is necessary for the, the superhero. Many times the superhero's environment is not the one that has been cultivated in the way that we say. It hasn't been nurtured because you spend so much time nurturing the environments of everybody else to make sure everyone else's needs are met. And in my experience, I spent so much of my life being everyone else's superhero. And when it came time to save myself, I didn't have any other tools to do, so I forgot that I had had them. Because you spent so much time saving everyone else, all your effort, all your energy, all your intentions. Absolutely. And saving everyone else and making sure everyone else is okay. And when it came and to sacrificing me, for everyone else. Sacrifice is real. And that's probably the biggest work, the biggest way to explain it is, is the amount of sacrifice you put in. But you sacrifice yourself in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. And not being truly happy and, and many times even maybe feeling resentful towards the role that you play in other individuals' lives because you have done this to yourself. You sabotage your own well-being, your own progress by being the savior of everyone else. Mm. Overcoming superhero syndrome. Who... Um, why have you seen suffer from that the most? I, I definitely, you know, we all, I'm sure mm -hmm. everyone's capable of being wrapped up in superhero syndrome, but is there a particular demographic or a certain people that you're speaking to? Um, definitely when you look at parents and, and the needs that they, um, the roles that they take on when they become in this parental role, by bringing up this this new being, being in a space where now it's their responsibility. They it said that you're supposed to forget about yourself now when you have a child, and it's all your whole world revolves Same. around them. These are things that have been said, even though they may not be truthful. This is the narrative that has been projected onto parents for them to have this thought process that this is what parenting looks like. And you you just neglect every you and neglect the rest of you yes yes and just put it all into the child I and, and okay. seeing that and and even looking back at my my own mother who you know put her own dreams aside until after we were grown it out of the house right and when we left the house hearing her say i don't know who i am anymore because everything that i was doing was for, was for you everything that i was doing yeah. was based on me being a mother right and this is who I identify with, is being a mom. 
And now that you're gone and I don't have to care for you in the way that I used to, what am I supposed to do with my time? Right. Who am I? Because they, because she was wrapped up, as we all have been at different times, wrapped up in the identity mm -hmm. and allowed the identity or the role to be, uh, allowed ourselves to mistake the identity and the, or the role for us. Yes. And, um, yeah, that, that leads to suffering. You know, a lot of people come my way that have that testimony. They will say, I don't know who I am or what I like or really, you know, anything about me because everything has been based off of who I was to other people and right. what roles I, um, I, I held. Um, and I tell those people that that's great. Like, you're not, this, this is not a deficit. Mm -hmm. You have a blank canvas. It's a great opportunity to start bringing light and life to your canvas. Absolutely. It's a great opportunity to start getting to know yourself. It's a great opportunity to take yourself on a date. It's a great opportunity to become intimate mm -hmm. with who you are. The greatest part about being broken is being able to choose how you put yourself back together. Mm -hmm. The greatest part about being empty is that you get to choose what you're going to fill yourself back up with. Absolutely. Every, every, every opportunity is an opportunity for you to be greater. Every instance is an opportunity. Everything that goes wrong is an opportunity for you to be greater. Um, but back to the superhero syndrome. Mm -hmm. I can see parents dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Caregivers are another big demographic. That's exactly as well. what I was about to say. I could definitely see because that's where I that's where it hits me at mm -hmm. is, is is on the caregiver side. Yeah, even for myself because that's what I was for so long. Okay, so let's talk. Uh, let's let's talk about that um, as a caregiver. Mm -hmm. There is that ability or there's that belief that you have just being the caregiver that what you're doing is going to make a difference or right. what you're doing is going to help and i think that is a part of what creates a psychosis that turns into um superhero syndrome mm -hmm. You feel validated by what you're doing. Right. And which is necessary for you to do what you're doing. Right. You're receiving the good feelings because you see that you, in real time that whatever you're accomplishing or whatever you're you're moving through the motions for this individual is bringing them some form of comfort or happiness. Right. It's an instant that form of validation that you receive. Even though the long-term effects of whatever the scenario may be they could have a terminal illness, and in my case, my mother did. But I knew whatever I was able to do in that moment was feeding her spirit and keeping her happy for whatever time she was going to be with me. And so when dealing with the superhero syndrome, mm -hmm. I know I, at one point, felt connected to the idea that I could save my mother. Mm. Absolutely. And the idea that um, I could impose my will for her survival on her. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm extremely grateful um, for my brother, uh, Al Tussin, who, who brought it to my awareness and my consciousness. Like, yo, if you keep going down in that path, you're going to suffer. Because the inevitable is about to take place. Right. And you can't keep holding on to this illusion that you can save her. Mm -hmm. um, which will bring us to a whole nother conversation on grief and, de and, and, and dealing with grief. But um, staying on, on topic, it's extremely easy to find yourself in this place where you feel responsible for another person's well-being mm -hmm. and your happiness becomes codependent on that person's well-being or that person's improvement that person's survival your ability to be remedying that person's life 
And at some point in time, that is going to lead you to suffer. Absolutely. I think um, being able, at least for myself, towards the end of that portion, um, I was able to realize that this was no longer the person that I used to identify with. And meaning my mother and the state that she was. Just, okay. Um, because of the type of cancer that she had, she had a glioblastoma, so that's a brain tumor. Mm. And that alone in itself would shift the way that you respond. It was almost like having multiple personalities at that point. Okay. So being able to understand that this is not the individual that I knew. So the way that you may speak at this moment, I can try to or at least to attempt to detach myself from the being that I already know is gone. Wow. And that had to be rough. Extremely rough. Yeah, it, it it wasn't easy to to go through the process, and I think just that separation in the midst of what I was still having to be a caregiver, still doing whatever I was doing for her to maintain her survival because she couldn't do it on her own. But being in a space where this is what I know to be true, and I have to align with that portion of my truth, and and that was probably the most difficult. Mm. Um. As a superhero, or as someone dealing with superhero syndrome, someone that gets your book, what is the strong point, the strength that your? Uh, it's okay to to cry on this podcast. <laughs> We're not I gonna just, do that. I just want you to know, like this is this is a safe place to release whatever you may need to. There's so much strength in it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm here for you. We're here for you. Uh, we'll be your superheroes in this moment. Oh, I you know what I'm saying. You. So tell me, and and when someone is reading your book who has experiences, um, how what's the light at the end of the tunnel? The light at the end of the tunnel would have to be that you're able to overcome this, and it doesn't have to be a long-standing situation that you're going through. Um, looking at the positives of the situation and not staying in just the space of wanting to live in the past I think is the most important we align so much with just the memories of the past versions of ourselves but being in a space where this is now the new reality the new space that I know I where I want to be what I align with um, and that old version isn't, isn't welcome here Right. And, and being able to stay in that space of, of our reality and our present um, is the most important. Yeah, <laughs> with your dad. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's, that's what helped me. And it, and it still helps me because we, we all go through those moments of um, memories, I think, more than anything. And that probably gets the most of us and brings us back to that space where we're thinking about um, just the happy times and even those can bring tears to your eyes and thinking about those past situations but I don't I don't align with the negatives and what I could have done and what what should have happened I was able to accept that this was a situation for her individually and for any person whenever you're dealing with superhero syndrome your your goal is to understand that the decisions of the individuals that you feel as though you need to save they still have to make those decisions mm -hmm. and they're going to have to live with whatever that consequence of their actions may be and you can't save them from themselves but we and i say we as the su superheroes mm -hmm. often feel um that we have to deal with the consequences of those actions but we and, don't so how do we get around that illusion? How do we get around that false understanding um, that we are responsible and will have to live on with the decisions that someone else makes for their life? By being a support system for someone else, it's always understanding that they are in charge of their own life and their own destiny, just like you are. Mm. And remembering that brings you back to the truth in the scenario. Can you control their actions? No, you can't. 
can you control the way that their life is already being played out and has already been aligned for them? No, you can't. All you can control is your reaction and control whether or not you want to stay there to watch them go through this process. Yeah. And being able to look at it that way without all the extra emotion and even though it will bring some to you, you know, you have to be able to bring yourself back to it. You know, our mind was hit hard, you know, even for the moment where my mom made a decision to leave our home, our family home where I was caring for her. And she said, I don't want to be here anymore. I would rather go to hospice instead. And that was her decision to go. I couldn't stop her. It was out of my control. So a lot of, for me, it forced me to have to deal with these. For other individuals, you have a choice. Mm. You know, to say that I'm willing to stand in this space and I understand that this is beyond me. And I'm not going to try to take your power away because I want to be in control of your situation. That's not my job. We have no right to force our will for someone's life on their life even if it's a better life than what that we they, may think that we're what we deem to be better which is a judgment absolutely you know um yeah we have no right to do that and we actually find ourselves suffering mm -hmm. for doing that and for believing it because yeah. if it doesn't go the way that you keep replaying in your head now you're you're you have all these reasons as to how why didn't you do something different all these whys yeah you know even in and when we talk about and even in the book super in superhero syndrome we talk about removing the why it's also an activity that i do in parenting with purpose your whys will create so much bitterness and anger within you because mm. you keep questioning why the situation didn't go another way i have people write down their whys and set them on fire no shit. Yes, I want you to burn them. Why? Because just in the act of you writing them down, scribing them, we talk about what it looks like to write. We talk about spelling, what that is. This is taking it and transferring those whys out of your mind. I put them on a piece of paper, and by burning them, now we are releasing them. Mm. There's no more need for you to align with your whys anymore. Because they are no more. Right. Okay. And they're not the truth. Your wives are not true in the situation. Like so why that. do you need them? I like that. Fire requires a change of form. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anytime you bring fire into it, I'm interested in see what the motivation is. Um, the fire of life will require a change of form for many of us, especially those who deal with the superhero syndrome. Mm -hmm. You know, I know... I think one of the saddest days for me was the day where my divine spirit linked over to me and was like, hey, you got to remove yourself mm -hmm. from the throne room of being her savior, her being my mother. Yeah. Like, Because everything in me was dedicated to saving her from the inevitable and saving her from uh, even from herself. And I was suffering. As her son, I was suffering as her caretaker because I couldn't create the reality that I desired. And, but still every day felt responsible for it. Mm -hmm. And in one day, my divine spirit, God, the ancestors whispered and it was like, oh, you have to remove yourself from the throne room of the thrones that being the, the, the throne, I'm sorry, of being her savior. Yeah. And it was the same thing that uh, Brother Al Tyson was telling me. Like, are you going to suffer mm -hmm. immensely from from placing yourself in this superhero position mm -hmm. and obligating yourself to these results? And I think you know anything that could be done to stop another um, another being from going down that path. I support, so I definitely support this book. When can we keep, when can we expect it? It will be it done out? at the end of this month. Um, July. Yes, July. It's the twenty second. Yes, I understand. Okay, that. so by the end of July, it's going to be done. Yeah, that's exciting. It is exciting. It has been a road of self discovery for myself. Mm. Um, and I know that we've had many discussions about this book and what it looks like and for me to um, 
ask for additional help through this process. You haven't asked for much help. <laughs> and you know, I just, as somebody who is doing something for the first time and to be so intimately connected with someone who has done it multiple times, mm -hmm. you haven't asked for much help. Why the fuck is that? <laughs> I love how you, you just said that so un unapologetic. Um, for me, it was an intimate moment for me to get through this process. Mm. There were many times that in the midst of writing that I was boohoo crying my eyes out. Um, just because I needed to go through it. And many times when you bring something different out of me. So let's say that. Um, you bring a lot of emotion when I don't want to have emotion and the way that I digest it even in those moments um, happens a little differently and most of this journey especially with superhero syndrome and just my own grief of what I have gone through I needed that somebody bring the queen of tissue <laughs> scrappy <laughs> that's what we need um, but I think even for myself and, and it being a a moment as to where I needed this. I needed this as a form of reflection, as a uh, growing tool. And, and when I was able to come back and, and get to a point where I felt I was comfortable or um, it would align. We got a rag and a tissue. Ooh, yeah, yeah. No, no, I like you to have options. Okay. You know what I'm yeah, not in, in any sense to say like, I just, I'm afraid of you reading it. It was just something that I need to go through. And even in this month in itself, there are many days that even though you've gone through a process of loss, you still have those moments in learning to just live through them. But even subconsciously, it's those moments occur where I knew that even with writing this book, the one person I wanted to be able to read it was her. Right. Can you move over this way? You want me closer to you? I would love for you to be closer to me. Is this close? It's, it's, not better. Better. it's a whole lot better. <laughs> it's a whole lot better. Um, but yeah, that, that was, I think, for me, the biggest... Um, part of this process was bringing myself out of that space okay that she would still be able to see it and hear it and see the difference that it was going to make even though she wasn't here right well she is going to be um here and be present and uh, to see everything that your energy is doing, her energy is going to, is going to be present. Um, and so I offer you that that comfort. I mean, crying for the podcast. Boy, look. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it too. <laughs> Got him. Yes. Oh my right goodness. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well superhero syndrome mm -hmm. available so I would say sometime in August then right yeah. sometime in August that's what's up and I'll be able to get that uh, where uh, for one my website hercollateralbeauty.com her collateral beauty dot com. Dot com. Yeah. It's an interesting name. Yeah. What is that about? Her collateral beauty yeah. is um it is me. It was there was a movie that that was called Collateral Damage. And um when I watched it it just just the name in itself aligned where after immense tragedy there you figure that there's this damage that happens but the beauty of this situation even though i experienced ups and downs i've gone through homelessness i've gone through 
um, abuse, tons of different things. And even though I was able, you know, or I went through that, it didn't stop me. There was always something beautiful at the end and the beautiful was always who I was after I went through all of that. And if I hadn't experienced it, you know, it would have taught me the many lessons that I needed to apply even into the life that I live now and to how I teach people. So her cloud or beauty is the beauty that came out of all of the things that I've gone through so far. Hmm. Absolutely beautiful. That is absolutely come and give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. <laughs> so that's where the name comes from. Okay. Where you can find my art, and you can find my book. You can find tons of cool stuff there. Parenting with purpose is all that her collateral beauty. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Well, we'll be right back in just a little bit for more of the Greater Resistance podcast. We've talked about her book. We've talked about her class, Parents and the Purpose. Mm -hmm. And we're going to keep the conversation going and talk on kind of what we were just touching on, dealing with um, loss, grief, mourning, um, how you do it in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah. We'll, we'll be we'll be right back for more the Greater Resistance Podcast. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte.